job order cost system is a type of cost system that would be used for a manufacturing firm that is producing a product that is specific or customizable or very individualized. It would be something that is definitely not uniform. They're not making the same things over and over and over all day. They're making something that is more specialized. So for instance, if you were a print shop, would be an example, and you made, say, graduation invitations or wedding invitations. Each order that came in would be a little bit different. They might all be wedding invitations, for instance, but the bride and groom probably are not going to be the same. The date is not going to be the same. The design is not going to be exactly the same. So there will be differences between each order that comes in for those invitations. They would probably use a job order cost system to account for the costs of those jobs or orders that they're processing. Let's look at how our costs would flow in a job order costing system, how we would account for those in our accounting system. First, let's talk about work in process. Remember, in manufacturing, we have three different types of inventory. We have raw materials inventory, work in process inventory, and finished goods inventory. Work in process is that inventory account we have for when we're making products, but they're not quite finished, so they're in process. We've done some work, we've allocated costs to them, but we're still working on them. They're not quite ready yet, not done. Now, when we talk about work in process, though, we also need to kind of back up for just a minute and talk about materials and labor. Remember, our manufacturing costs, there's direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. So before you can have something in process, you have to have materials. So you take raw materials, you use labor and manufacturing overhead and convert those raw materials into a finished product. So when you purchase materials, that's when you're going to record something in the raw materials inventory account. You purchase those materials, put them in a materials warehouse, for instance. So you, in the costing side, we would debit raw materials when we purchase and receive that raw materials inventory. When we use the materials is when we're going to take it out of there because again we are using it so you credit that account and you're going to put it into production. You're putting it say on the factory floor. You're beginning to work on something. So you take it out of materials inventory and you're going to put that into work and process inventory or debit that account to show that flow of costs from materials to work and process. You'll also do that with labor. As you work on things and you provide labor uh, for that production, you're going to record that labor in the work in process account. So you'll debit work in process for the labor aspect of that too. Our third manufacturing cost is manufacturing overhead. Now we've talked about labor and materials, but remember we also have some pieces of that that might go to manufacturing overhead. For instance, let's say we've taken out some materials and we are using those in production. Some of those are direct materials, but what if some of those were indirect? The direct portion is going to be added or debited to the work and process inventory, not all of it. Let's say we requisition $10,000 of materials and a materials requisition is a document that would be filled out to show that we are taking materials out of that inventory and putting them into production how much and what they're being used for and what specific orders under a job cost system that they are being used for so when we put that requisition in um, that's how we can record what we're using or how much to credit out of the inventory materials inventory account but let's say that 8,000 of that is direct materials and 2,000 is indirect. The $8,000 is going to be debited to work in process for the direct materials portion, but the $2,000 is going to be debited to manufacturing overhead to show the actual amount of indirect materials that we've used. The same thing goes for labor. Direct labor is debited to work in process, but the indirect portion is going to be debited to manufacturing overhead. We track labor on time tickets, and that shows me what labor is being used, where it's allocated, what jobs are being worked on, and how long. Other manufacturing overhead charges could be things like 
um, utilities. Okay, we incur uh, those lights. Uh, we have lights hanging overhead. We have depreciation on factory equipment. We have insurance on the factory. All those actual charges will also be debited into work in process as they're incurred. Now, eventually, though, we're going to need to take those costs and allocate them somehow to the work that we are in process, that work in process account, those jobs we're working on. We have to take that manufacturing overhead and apply it to them somehow. We'll talk about that later, but we're going to use something called a predetermined factory overhead rate, and that's how we're going to allocate or apply factory overhead to those jobs. Look for another mini lecture on manufacturing overhead or the predetermined rate for manufacturing overhead. So I'll explain that in more detail there. When we do apply that, however, we figure out this number, we apply it and we take it out of manufacturing overhead and apply it to the jobs that are in work in process. So we would credit manufacturing overhead for the part we're applying and debit it or add it into work in process. Now we've allocated or applied those costs also to the jobs that we're working on to show all those things that are the overhead part of the process. Now we've been working on these products, we've got materials in there and labor and all of our manufacturing overhead, and now we finally finished some. So some of those orders we've finished. Well, they don't need to stay in work in process anymore because they're done. They're not in process. So we need to move them into the finished goods inventory, the third inventory type. So we're going to credit work in process for the total of all of those costs. Again, the, the direct materials, the direct labor, and all the manufacturing overhead that we've tracked for that order. And how we track this is on a job cost sheet. It's like a summary of all those costs that we've associated and allocated to each individual job or order. The total of all those job cost sheets gives me the total and what we should have in work in process for the company as a whole. So we also will see all the individualized charges for each job on each specific job cost sheet and track them by job number. Well, when we get done with one of those and we have all those costs totaled up, we take the total of those costs and credit work in process and we're going to debit finished goods and move those costs over because now those are finished. We're just waiting to sell them. Once we do sell them, we're going to move it out of finished goods and it's going to become cost of goods sold. So we're going to credit finished goods for those costs and debit cost of goods sold. And that's how costs flow through a job order cost system.